on the top of the figure, I've kind of indicated the structure. And you don't necessarily see the structure at the end, but you need to know and understand the structure. Like an outline that you might do for a paper you might be writing, you may have to have, you know, where the thing is going and how it articulates and transits from one point to the next point. Well, here at the um, hips, the outer hip, I know it's out there, and then the leg comes down quite far uh, to the knee, and then bends over almost impossibly, and then the foot, um, that's actually uh, extension, this up, that's called extension, or um, a plantar extension, plantar flexion, plantar extension. So here, we have the heel and the foot on the ground, and if I make a line, I'm making perspective in space. But anatomically, I would want to see the uh, tibia and various forms in there if I were going getting very detailed, but I'm not going to get detailed there. The other leg comes down and is, is foreshortened, so it's much shorter than the amount of space of the other leg. And then the foot is made rather awkwardly uh, on the ground, but there again, if I put a line and other lines, I'm making space. Indeed, if I, if I just make a, spa a, a form here, and then it's existing, but once I put lines behind or lines around it, I'll, I'll be setting it in a kind of space that we believe in, space that travels back and isn't floating up somewhere and flying away. But once I've established the figure somewhat, I could say, first of all, the, um, the arm that comes across the body is in a very confused position, but I'm just going to color it a little bit. Then suppose I take the whole body and unify the body. This is what Rodan did with a lot of his sketches after he took them back into the studio. I'm going to unify the body by giving every part of it the same color so that it works like a little uh, light silhouette and, and takes on a stronger presence on the page and stronger shape or silhouette. And of course, once I do that, I'm appealing to your most basic visual instincts, which are uh, to see something as just a flat shape and to recognize shape rather than volume and form and uh, the sensual things of, uh, that we expect in drawings and paintings, the, the realities of, of uh, space. Even though we want the realities uh, of space somewhat in our pictures, we are much more moved, I believe, by little flat shape forms. And any piece of negative space, like that one down there, which I can make blue just there, is there's a little negative space and there's another one. Those little spaces are aesthetically very appealing to people. Now, if I were Rodan, I might decide, forget all that, I might decide just to take my watercolors and wash through everything and destroy some of the edges, as well as to make another kind of space that's less real, and yet it is real. And it's, it's one of these things that I have on the ground, one of these things going across. But if I even had it going kind of off and almost a diagonal, it would be even more exciting or whatever. So I can play with this um, image that I've made in any way I wish. And uh, watercolor is a very good medium to use in doing that to um, extend the uh, color, the feeling, the space of your figure drawing. So I suggest that when you draw figures, you do often one on a page and take them home and work on them to study and to learn and to, uh, and to possibly make a work of art. But who knows? <laughs> Good luck. <laughs>